2023, I grew my YouTube channel from 2,000 to 17,000 subscribers. I got to work with the coolest brands, became more confident, and all while starting my dream job and studying my master's at uni. And these are just a few of my wins of 2023. Now don't be fooled, with all these ups came some decent downs. I also lost friends, struggled to keep up with uni, failed at being consistent on my social media channels, really neglected eating well, and barely worked out consistently. I share my fails because they're an important part to learning what went wrong and then figuring out how to do it better. The thing is, I don't see them as fails. It's just a term we use to label it. I see them as information I get to use to do di things differently and better. So the reality, or my reality, is that the things that I struggled with last year could have been avoided had I optimized my top time management and implementation routine. Which is why I'm entering 2024 with better know-how on how to actually get what I want using my simplified planning approach. Because simpler really is better. So I thought I'd share with you the new and improved step-by-step -step plan I will use. To break it down, we have 365 days, 52.1429 weeks, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes. Now assuming we have time on our side, it's less about having the time, but more so choosing it at the right time. So let me explain. Let's say you have six hours after school or work to yourself, to chill or to do whatever you want, but no matter what, you end up doing the same things. You don't have energy to go to the gym, you don't do the things that you actually want to do. Here's where I think we go misinformed. If our optimal energy levels are in the morning, but we've spent the entire day now, and by the end of it, we're drained. Because here's why, when you feel exhausted, physically exhausted, and you seem, you think no matter what I do now, it's gonna take so much energy, then that's most likely because you're in shutdown because shutdown is a mainly physiological state where our nervous system doesn't seem to feel safe enough to get into action to get into moving so forcing ourselves won't solve the problem it'll actually make it worse but there is a different way so let me show you look at your average day in 2023 based on this what would you say is the optimal time a day when you have the most energy to get things done and get into action for me, it's definitely in the morning. So the question is then, how can we use this information to make a plan that suits and works with us instead of against us? Trust me when I say I've tried a lot of different Notion templates, some free and others for a decent buck, but they all have one thing in common. They were always missing something. So a while back, I started making my own templates and with every single one I shared, I learned something. Two years later, and I present to you the 2024 Planner Bundle. Jen, can we get back to the video now? Now that we've looked at the first two steps, one being keeping it really simple, making our goals as compact and as straightforward as we can, and two, focusing on having fewer goals that end up bringing more reward than the other way around. The last step is on how to actually implement it, and this is where planning comes in. If we don't plan, if we don't plan, everything goes out the shitter. That's my personal belief. I don't know anyone who has huge ambitious goals and doesn't plan on how to get there. Now, there's a bunch of different YouTube videos and tutorials on how, how different people organize and plan and structure their time management. And I'm not gonna be sitting here and telling you which one to choose because I think everyone's different. Everyone has a different mind. So that's why I don't wanna go into that. But I do wanna tell you my three key takeaways on how I would approach planning and using Notion for the entire year. And that is this. 
one goals plus process equals joy. As I said, the, just reaching a goal won't be as satisfying as you think it is. I really do believe that the process is more important than the goal and the goal is just the compass showing us the direction. So what I'm doing is for any goal that I'm setting in 2024, I will make sure it's something I want to achieve that I'm very passionate about, but that the process there or the way there is just as enjoyable and that I want to take time for it and not like I have to use my time for it. The second one is time frame. You need to make sure you know in what time frame you want to accomplish what. This is more of a structural approach and I would definitely recommend using a notion template where you, you can plan according to the quarters of the year. I think having one goal for the year and not setting a time frame for when can get very confusing. So what I do is I set my goals. I set between three and five goals maximum this year. And I make sure that I have a time frame for each every one of them so that I know which quarter of the year I'm going to focus on this. So we have one, two, three, four. <laughs> and so whenever I set the goal, I ask myself, what time frame do I want to put it in and over what period? Because some goals I'll have to work on consistently throughout the year and others I can just do for three months. Like right now, I'm training for a half marathon. I don't think I'll be doing another half marathon this year. So this will take time out of quarter one, but not out of quarter two, three, and four. And then the last one, which you already saw, is that we're keeping it simple and fun because that's the energy that we need to attract and manifest it to come true. This is for some people who like, woo, like they don't believe in it. I really do. I think that the way to attract what we want is to be in the energy to believe that we already have it and that doesn't happen when we're frustrated or we feel like it's never gonna happen or we feel scarcity around it. We have to feel like we're already it and we feel that way if we're on high vibrational energies and we do that by being in a good mood and we do that by doing things that actually are fun. So I'm not saying they're not strenuous or they will require to push through when you don't have energy, but I'm saying they have to be fun about 80 to 90% of the the way there of the work.